Welcome to Actor Z. I'm your host, Rick Drayson. And today we have a very, very special guest who's multi, 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 <laughs> multi talented. <laughs> and there's so many things to list about her that I can only go through a few. And then she and I will go through all of them together. But she was um, renowned as America's American Idol's vocal coach from hell, which yes. means that's a perfectionist in my eyes. <laughs> um, she was in... Uh, Sisterella, Wild Woman Blues, President Bill Clinton had uh, requested her to sing at his first inauguration, which is really a big deal. And it's my pleasure to welcome Peggy Blue. Yay! Hello, 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 everybody. Well, we have stories, you have stories upon stories upon stories, so I'm just going to let you go with the stories. But let's, let's, start, let's start in the beginning because it's, everybody has a starting point in life. And um, obviously, yours was singing, right? Or was not? Absolutely. It was. Okay, and what, what age was that? Three years old. Um, and I was three when I turned professional, my mother says, because, shall I tell you why? Let's hear it. Because I sang for the mayor. They put me on his dining room table, <laughs> and uh, after he had won, they put me on the dining room table. I sang a song called, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder, I'll Be There. And he paid me. So that's when you turn professional. That's when you turn professional, when you that's get that, it. that paycheck. That's <laughs> absolutely true. Um, <laughs> you had this desire within you, obviously, at, at three years old. Oh, yeah. Uh, from, uh, I would say from, m my mother says, my mother and my grandmother said, <clears throat> I came into the world without a doctor, first of all. The doctor said to my mother, she's not ready yet. And he turned and walked out the door. And my grandmother said, you just went, boom, and you were there. And she said, I said, Ah, and then she turned to my mother and said, oh, she's singing. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. How did it take off from there? I mean, what, from three on, what was your next step? Singing in my mother's church choir, uh, in the kids' choir, okay. in, the, in the group with a cousin of mine. But, you know, when you, you don't speak that clearly when you're three. Of course. But you do the best you can. Like, for instance, when the role is called up yonder, became when the yo is called up yonder. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have an R yet. But singing with other people like in a choir like that only inspires you to sing better because, you, you know, you're always in the learning process and yes. you're learning from others that have, are older and better than you. And so you, it just filters on down to your training, right? Yes, it does. And my mother also was a vocal coach and a voice teacher, so she had a firm hand and she would say no that's not right do it again and then i'd sing it again and she'd go i said that's not right do it again <laughs> is so that where you got it probably <laughs> <laughs> probably was it hard was it hard i mean i taught my kids how to play guitar and i worked with them and i wasn't uh, i also taught guitar as well and you yeah. can see the good and the bad you can see all people coming around different ways it was it hard working with your mother rather than another coach oh no not at all did you find it easier it, it was wonderful because she was emphatic about it being right, yeah. and she could sing. Good God, could she sing? She played m minimum amount of piano, enough to get me through what I needed to get through. Um, and so it was a joy to work for her. You play and I say for her. You play an instrument too? I play, I used to play piano, but I'm not playing anymore with my nails. I might break one. Oh, yeah, you don't <laughs> want to do that. It's going to ruin your look, for God's sake. Um, because it's always good to have an accompaniment when you're, when you're doing something. I mean, you can sing without it, but it just having those little chord changes in the background, you know how it changes one note? Just like five chords changes one note? Well, you know, my, my, part of my problem singing is and, and sitting down to play for myself is that I always would get up oh. and pick up the mic and leave, and then there would be no music. <laughs> but, so, because if there are people over here to my left, yeah. and I'm sitting here, I can't get to them, and I can't, so I have to get up and walk over to talk to them in song. So you need longer arms? I, I, I needed to get up from the piano, which I, I did that. All right, so <laughs> let's go on a little bit more forward. This is like this is your life. I feel like Ralph Edwards from this. <laughs> All right, so from three on, and then you, you graduated into more singing. What, what age did you go a little bit farther? Mm. I would say by the time I was about 12, I had covered most of, the, first of all, I'm born in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was about 12, I will say 14, because I left there when I was 14. I had covered pretty much all of the North Carolina state. Um, covering, how do you mean by covering? Singing Where? for everywhere, you name it, pick a place. Wow. Churches, tent meetings, schools, wherever there was music, 
there was me. That's the best training in the world. Um, the, I remember JC's fair came. It's a, a fair. And they came to the JC's fairground in Lumberton. And then there was a carnival that came. And I think I was maybe 11. And I climbed out the window and went and said, my name is Peggy Blue and you should hear me sing. I'm a singer. You should really listen to me. And they were like, how old are you? And of course I lied. Yeah, of course. Because, what you know, and I said I was a teenager and they said, okay, go ahead and sing. And there was one guy whose name I don't remember, but they were singing songs and it, it, um, I only have eyes for you. Mm -hmm. My love must be a guy. And I was like, I know that song. And he said, go ahead and sing it. And I said, you sing the verse. And when it got to, I only have eyes, I sang the harmony and he went, you're good, <laughs> you're good, but you're good. you gotta go. And then there was my dad that night, he wasn't supposed to be there either. And I walked out on stage and there he was, and he was like, what are you doing here? And I said, what are you doing here? <laughs> if you tell mommy on oh, me, I'm gonna tell on yeah. you. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, caught in the act both ways. Oh yeah, busted. Oh, that's really funny. So from that point, uh, after you, you, you exposed yourself all over the South, yeah. area, then you had to grow even more. I went to New York um, with my uncle, who, who was a bishop and a minister. And I, I had gotten a job with a gospel group called the Nat Lewis Singers, who had come to perform at our church in North Carolina. And he said, Nat Lewis said to me, if you ever come to New York, look me up. But then they got a job in Las Vegas, and they said, we want you to join the group. It was Nat Lu Nathaniel Lewis and the Nat Lewis Singers, and we did gospel. And so my uncle said to my mother, send her, she can stay with me, and I'll get her a tutor and a nanny and let her go. And so that's what they did. So I, that's why I left at 14, went to Las Vegas, played the, Nas the La um, Nevada Club on the uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. At 14? Uh, oh, yeah. But, of course, I was 16, yeah. they thought. And I remember Joe Scandori and Mel Shane were the managers, and they were the ones who were in charge. And they, they looked past it, and they said, we're going to make these papers and doctor these papers. Of course, they were from a different side of... Um, never mind. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they did what they had to do to get me working. And the uh, nanny would take me. I would walk on stage and sing. And then she'd say, okay, off in this room. And that's where you stay. And then the tutor would be at my door in the morning. I would be so exhausted. And she'd say, get up. you got to do homework. And I would go, I wish you would just go away. <laughs> but she couldn't go away because my uncle was paying her. To be yeah. there. Sure, of course. <laughs> you had to do it. I had no choice. So at 16, you could play in Vegas, but you had to like pull some strings. Uh, they pulled some strings for me, and I did what I needed to do. Absolutely. <laughs> and then from that point, what happened? Oh, my God. It went on and on and on. I ended up <coughs> um, in a play called, oh, my God, it was, uh, 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 oh, something at, at the street out on Broadway with another group called Clara Walker and the Gospel Redeemer. But do you know, in Vegas, we worked with not only the Nat Lewis singers, Clara Ward was on that show, too. She was a part of that show, and the Clara Ward singers. So we d I just did, when I went back to New York, of course, I went back to school. And then we kept working in clubs and doing what we needed to do and with my doctored files. Who's this? Clara Ward. Okay. <laughs> That's Clara Ward. Yeah. I've had an interesting, wonderful life. Absolutely. Um, so at that point, your career started to blossom even more, and you started to do more things. And where'd you go from there? Back to, I, I was in church, so I never left the church until much later. Okay. I started singing with a group called the Humble Gospel Singers. I'm trying to rem and, and keep them all in order. Um, the Humble Gospel Singers were not at that time a recording act, but the Gospel Starlets were. And the Gospel Starlets, we did, that's who I did the other sort of, sort of theater venture out. It was off Broadway, but it was in a nightclub. And we were a few people, us and the Herman Stevens Gospel Singers. Uh, we would go into the nightclubs, but it had become a theater. Mm -hmm. 
and we would sing gospel. And it just ricocheted and parlayed, and then I ended up a sand pebble. Um, and from this, you know, um, Never My Love. Okay. You ask me if there'll come mm -hmm. a time. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. That. <laughs> and then from, and that parlayed. And I'll tell you something. Right now, you can see, you can hear me, because from that came a record called Santa Claus is a Black Man. What year was that? Oh, my God. This is way back in the very early, about 1972. Okay. 70, 71, 72, somewhere around there. And um, it was done by Teddy Van for his daughter, Akim. And she's singing it. And then not a lot of people know that it's me and my daughter, who was about seven then. And two. There it is. And two, that's it. That's Teddy and Akim. And it's all over the place now. And when Akim's, when she's finished singing, then you hear me. Santa Claus is a black man. Santa Claus is a black man. You know, he's handsome like my daddy too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really early. It's oh, like the wee hours of the morning be singing. <laughs> but it's on now. It's up now. And it's history making. And I couldn't even believe it. It's made history. It's really funny how things in the past, when you do something like that, and you think, okay, it's, it's, we kind of just did that and that's that, and then later on it comes back and it becomes this huge thing, and you don't even expect it. The day we were in the studio, I said to Teddy, who was wonderful, I said, you know, we're either going to get slapped for this, mm -hmm. or it's going to be something that'll be around forever, or even after forever, and lo and behold, here it is. Yeah, yeah, that's how things happen. It's amazing. It's amazing. And so after that, you, you, your career started to go even more, obviously. Um, that record, that from Santa Claus is the Black Man, gave me um, a record with Teddy Van that didn't, the Sand Pebbles never really kicked off after that. It never, the, the group sort of dissipated. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there was the Crystals behind that. You're watching Actor Z. I'm your host, Rick Drazen. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Why do clients like these, and these, and these, choose And Now Media? When they've got a message, an audience that they want to reach, why do they dive into our world? They do it because they want mind-bendingly breakthrough creative. They want to take focus. They want results beyond their expectations. And now, you've got a boutique creative house that's at your disposal a passionate professional team concocting, executing videos that connect your message to your audience like never before. And now dive into our world. Creativity with purpose. See how far your message can go. And now it's your turn. And now media. Creating success, one video at a time. Welcome back to Actors E Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drayson. I'd like to remind you to go to actorsreporter.com and click on the Actors Discount links to all of our sponsors. I'm sure you can find something there that you might need or you might want to give someone for the holidays and get your Actors Discount. Actorsreporter.com. That was easy. I was. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Let's move on. Mm. Where did you go from there? I stopped at the Crystals. There were, I am, I must clarify, I'm the second group of the Crystals. There were, I think, five or something before with Darlene Love. And then after that group disbanded, Teddy put it back together. And that's the first time I met Luther Vandross and became <laughs> friends. He was 14 He's when awesome. I met him. Awesome. And we became really good friends until his death. And um, and I went from there to the to the Sand Pebbles. But let me just back up to get to the Robert Patterson Singers, another gospel group that was recording also, and we were fierce, I must say. Um, and then um, after that was the Sand Pebbles, and uh, the Sand Pebbles we toured, and no, Sand Pebbles was first, then the Crystals. We toured all over Europe all over Germany, all over England. And I remember the day we got off the, the flight in England, 
I didn't expect it. We started to walk off Pan Am, and all these people were rushing. You had to walk downstairs. All these people were rushing the stairs, and I started looking around saying to my girlfriend, Louise, who are they coming to see? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, who are all these people? And why are they holding up these things? And they went, whoosh, and asked for autographs. And I was like, do I run now or later? <laughs> that must have been overwhelming. It was fabulous. You had no clue they were coming for you? No. I had never experienced that quite That's amazing. before. And I, it, it frightened me a little bit. But then I thought, okay. Buck up, girl. Go with it, yeah, it's absolutely. It's nice. Roll with this punch. A lot of, a lot of <coughs> groups, so you said they had like five different groups. Back then, the 60s and 70s, they always were reinventing. They were losing people and reinventing groups all the time, weren't they? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Because people moved on yeah. to other things. Yeah. And they, if you had a hit record, yeah. then you needed somebody to replace. Of course. And perform that. Right. You, you know. think it changed the group much by bringing in another person? It changed the sound. The sound, I mean, mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Because no, well, when they brought me, I can say for me, because I don't sound like anybody but me. Right. Um, I think it changed, but I also think it, in some cases, it was better because of the fire that we brought to it. Exactly. Yeah, I understand that totally. And then from there, after that, what happened? Where'd you go? I. St went back to church after <coughs> I stopped that I went back and just started singing in my uncle's church choir and then but while I was one of the crystals uh, no, no no before th the reason how I got to the crystals is one day I was sitting <coughs> in my living room and my girlfriend Louise Bethune called me up and she said what are you doing I said I'm ironing I'm sitting in my living room ironing there's me as a crystal right there oh there you go uh-huh there's me and she said, so meet me tonight um, at the rehearsal for the crystals. And I was like, rehearsals? What do you mean rehearsal for the crystals? Don't I need to audition? She said, no. I said, you have it and you have it if you want it. So I went, and that's actually where I met my husband that night. And he was there auditioning to play guitar for the yeah. group. So we toured and we went and we toured and we went and we rolled and we rolled and we rolled and it was great. We had a good time. And after that, we start started I started the Wiz. That's when I got the Wiz. Um, and it was the national company. And I didn't go to audition the Wiz for myself. A girlfriend of mine named Mimi Locario Dumbia or Dumbia. Her husband and, and mine at that time played for Harry Belafonte mm -hmm. on the road. And the role came up for Eveline. And Mimi said, I want to go and audition for the role of Eveline, but I don't know how to sing that well. She worked at a place called La Mama Actor Studio in New York. So I said, okay, I'll trade off with you. I'll teach you the singing if you'll teach me the acting Is this it? and yeah. get me better. That's me in The Wiz. <coughs> yes, that's me as Auntie M right there in The Wiz. Um, I love this. That's, uh, that's Stephanie, Stephanie Mills, sure. who I also sang for. Sure, I remember her very well. So, but I went with Mimi, and I was standing in the back on behind the curtain on the side of the stage, and Mimi didn't get it. But lo and behold, the doorman knew who I was because I'd been working clubs in Manhattan, and I had just appeared at the bitter end. And he said, I know who you are. And I said, no, you don't. And he literally pushed me onto the stage, <laughs> and he said to Linda Twine, and lo and behold, Jeffrey Holder and Ken um, uh, was in the, uh, they were sitting in the back. He said, this is Peggy Blue and you should hear her saying, I just saw her performing, blah, 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 blah. And they Jeffrey pushed, right there's there. Jeffrey, yeah. yeah, who designed my makeup uh, in the Wiz in my dressing room. I got to tell you that cute story that he said to me. But they, they pushed me onto the stage and Jeffrey got up and started to walk down the aisle and I thought, oh my God. He probably hates me. I'm standing there, I'm singing, put your arms around me, child. And I'm, he's walking, like when you bumped you, and he's walking toward me, and I go, okay, just kick it as much as you can. And if he tells you you suck, then I guess he knows. Yeah. He walked up to the stage and he said, who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm back. He said, I need you to go to my show, to be in my show. And I was like, 
okay, but it was to go to Chicago. And I thought, you've lost your mind with all that. I don't want to go to Chicago in the dead of winter. Of course not. December 16th. <coughs> That's when he sent me there as the understudy to Auntie M and Glenda the Good Witch. It was the most amazing experience, one of the most amazing experiences I've had in my life. One day he walked in my dressing room here at the Amundsen, and I didn't have on my high heel shoes, and I didn't have my hair all piled up and my big costume hat. And he said to me, who hired you? I said, you did. <laughs> he said, I would never have hired anybody so short to play Glinda. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeffrey Holder was the cola nut. I, he yes, did, he did, he yeah. Did it very well. The Uncola. The Uncola, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had that voice. It's funny how, oh. how things happen, though. I mean, you didn't even go to audition for it and you fall no. into it. And that's how that happens a lot in life. It does. With a lot of things. Isn't that amazing? It is. It's just like it's meant to be and it happens and you don't know how you're there at the right moment. And people always say, oh, you were just there at the right moment. But you're there at the right moment. And, and because that's <clears> how it works. Exactly. It's exactly how it works. So after the whiz, what did you do? After the Wiz, I came home, went back doing nightclubs, did, uh, played every club in the city you could think of, toured with folks, um, and then all of a sudden one day I get a phone call. I got the gig with Stephanie Mills because of the Wiz, mm -hmm. um, and they hired me after they had fired two girls, and I said, you, you, you got rid of two girls and you're hiring one of me? And Stephanie said, yeah, because you can cover both. Oh. <laughs> it's like you said, you can sing it up for both of them. And they gave me the, uh, um, the music. I got a tape. At that time, it was a tape. Yeah, tape. You know. And uh, they, there's Mike. There she is. She's gorgeous. And um, I had like two days to learn her entire show. And I did. And they flew me to her. We worked together, and then she was making um, Merciless, the Merciless CD mm -hmm. album at that time. And I get a phone call <coughs> from Joey, her brother, who said, um, Stephanie wants you to sing the duet with her. His name is Michael. And I was like, what, me? She wants me to sing the duet with her? And they had already had Whitney Houston, and I was like her first vocal coach. And uh, they had her, they had like, I won't even bother to go through the list, but she didn't want any of them. She said, I want you. And I went and we sang it. And it, it's just so fabulous. Were you a vocal coach at the time? I've always been a vocal coach because I also vocal coach, you know, remember Irene Cara? Oh, sure, sure. There's Whitney there. Beautiful. Fame. Sure, sure. Every word that came out of her mouth came from mine first. Really? On my living room floor. 7,000 Boulevard East. I watched that. I, I remember that very, very well. Well, the record, she came. My husband went and picked her up and brought her to my house because she, she called me up. I actually have a, a, a letter of thanks from Michael Gore, who was the producer of that, that said thank you. So I went in the studio. But I also sang on the background for it, too. You are involved. Luther. Very involved. I was. Oh, that's so nice. Had a good time. I'm sure you did. After that... Um, doing this, uh, where'd you go from that level then? Oh my God, I need to have my... What <laughs> <laughs> to recall? Uh, uh, because, it's, because there were so many other things that happened in between <coughs> those yeah. times, yeah, sure. you know? Um, I also, during that time, I was doing Apollo Just Like Magic with George Faison. Uh, that was an amazing thing, and Prince came to see that show. I played, the, I played Tina Turner, and I played Bessie Smith. And Prince was in the audience one night and said to George, and this was the time Prince had done Whole of Your Mother, mm -hmm. and he said to George, I want her. Uh, I want to record her. And so George came to me and said, you know, Prince is interested. And we had a meeting together with him. And there he is, yes. We had a couple of meetings, and I couldn't get around the material that he wanted. I couldn't somehow sing that. Yeah. I couldn't let that out of my mouth because my mother would have killed me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, he was a very talented guy. He's a, he is extremely talented. We've been in each other's company because we sang, we did something together here many years later. 
So, but I did that, uh, and that was supposed to be, that was also produced by Nick Ashford and Valerie Simpson, mm -hmm. who are also friends of mine, mm -hmm. and who were absolutely partly responsible for my Capitol Records CD. How'd that happen? The, the, from Star Search. They oh, the, the, yeah, Star Search. Let's talk about that. I read that about you. Tell me about it. A Star Search was, <coughs> I was on Broadway doing a play called Marilyn American Fable, mm -hmm. Marilyn and American Fable with Kenny Ortega. And there was a man in that play named Bubba Dean Rambo. Now I had auditioned for Star Search the year before with, but with my band, mm -hmm. Peggy Blue and Blue Pearl, mm -hmm. name of my band. But all the band slots were filled. So they said, come back next year. Well, please. I was busy, so I wasn't going to be bothered. I wasn't used to auditioning. Who's that her? Uh, that's Kenny. That is Kenny, who I just saw in Bloomingdale's last week. <laughs> we yucked it up in the aisles. But um, sh he said, and he was from the South, he said, I want to bring my girlfriend Gail down here, and I want her to hear you sing. And I said, she's not interested in me. They, you know, they don't, they don't want me. He said, yeah. And he brought her to my show. And she said to me, could I please record your next show and send it to Mr. Ed McMahon in Hollywood. This is from York. Star Search, right? That is from Star Search. You don't have any sound on that? That's the no. ending. That's my, um, that's the grand finale. It took me, I named it the eight minute mile because you know, I had to keep proving to myself sure. that I didn't need two minutes. <laughs> they gave me two minutes. And I thought, well, heck, I did it in two minutes last time. I don't need two minutes. And they said, but we have two minutes. But I don't need two minutes. So every time I did it, I cut it down. <laughs> so, but you know. Anyway, he, 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 he brought Gail to the show. She sent the tape. And he said, I want her on the show. And that's how that happened. And from that came the Capitol Records. But that was after my Jerry Ragavoy record, I Got Love. And after Girls It Ain't Easy. So you already had two on injection uh, records. records out prior to that one. I had, yeah, <coughs> two, yeah solo stuff you think, prior to Star Do you Search. think that today the record business has really changed tremendously from what it was then? There is no record business. There's not, is there? Oh, no. Please. What's happened? Um people, the, the industry and the music changed. It's different yeah. in that the sound of the music is different. I don't consider a lot of stuff musical so much these days because there are a lot of people who have major hits yeah. who can't sing their way of out course. of a wet paper bag if you punched a hole in it first. You're watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drayson. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors with the fabulous Peggy Blue. Hey everyone, I am Judith Jones. If you are looking for photographs, which a lot of you are, let's face it, we need photographs every day. Actors, models, even if you're just, you know, the milkman, you need photographs, okay? You need to look good. And if you wanna look good, you've only got one man to go to, and that's John Michael Ferrari. You see, I needed to look, I needed to look good. So I went to John and he basically took me to the most beautiful place in LA and took these wonderful photographs of me and I really didn't even recognize myself because I just looked, well, let's just face it, I looked stunning. So if you wanna look stunning like myself in those photographs, uh, go to him, he will make you look beautiful. If you're pretty, he'll make you look prettier. If you're not pretty, he'll make you look pretty. John Michael Ferrari. That's all you need to know. So go to imagesbyferrari.com. That's the website, imagesbyferrari.com. And you can check out all his photography and you can contact him there. You can look at a picture of me. He directed me, because if you need direction, which, hello, I do, uh, he directs you too. So go and check that out, imagesbyferrari.com. You'll love it, you'll look great. Check it out, bye everyone. Hi, uh, you're walking, watching Actors Eat Chat. I'm your host, Rick Drayson, and I want to remind you to go to actorsreporter.com and click on the Actors Discount links because there's all of our sponsors are on there, and I'm sure there's something that might suit your fancy that you can buy for yourself or a friend for the holidays and get your Actors Discounts, which are very important nowadays. Uh, let's hear the story that we've been holding back 
about Tom Jones? Oh, my God. He, you know, I, I've loved him for so many years. That Welsh diva, Devo, should I call him? That boy can sing. Oh, yeah. That boy can perform. There's more to it than just this singing. This is the photo from that. This is a photo that was... By the way, that is an awesome photo. Thank you. I'm kind of sitting like that now because my knee... <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, we were in the middle... Of, uh, this is the, the photo shoot from one of my... Um, by this time, it's a CD called Living on Love. And we were shooting this, and we were in Beverly Hills, and I'm sitting on that log because the cameramen were arranging the next shot. And my knee was hurting, and, we, and I'm right near a deli, and out the door walks Tom Jones, and he looks down at me, and he goes, hello. And I go, hello, it's really you, and I'm looking up at him. That's why I'm looking up. Look it's at that Tom gorgeous Jones, diva. Yeah. And he said, what's your name? And I told him, and he said, what are you doing here? And I told him, and he said, why are you holding your knee? I said, I'm rubbing it because it hurts, <laughs> you know? And lo and behold, I was waiting actually for my makeup artist to come and touch the makeup again. The cameraman shot that cotton picking picture, and that's what it is. And it's a good picture. Somebody seems to think so. so. <clears throat> that's a good picture. But I'm actually not, it's not a pose, I'm literally rubbing my aching knee. <laughs> yeah, and this, uh, and this weather, that happens to mine too. Uh, we were talking just briefly about the record business because it has changed so much over the years and the talent, the, everything is done electronically and digi yes. digital and yes. you can you can pitch the voices wherever you want to put them and you don't have to be great and yeah. it's kind of sad because uh it's taken a lot away from the music business i mean there's the good talent there's a lot of good talent and it's not where it is anymore i think it's uh, you know why the other reason why it's so sad is because when you see somebody uh, and this is supposed to be a secret but it actually isn't you see somebody performing and they're on this mega stage and they've got all this wonderfulness behind them and the kids are across the stage and they're dancing and they're whooping it up mm -hmm. and they're not singing no they're not singing mm -hmm. if you turn the track off and say sing to me eight bars you don't even need eight say sing four bars no they can't even do that no I own a recording studio with my husband we do it all day it is so annoying I also still vocal coach I have private students and if what I coach is I don't I'm not gonna bother to teach you to sing you need to know something I will teach you performance skills and how to relay the message there is a message in a song I want you to get it out right. paint me a picture learn how to sing on pitch learn how to tell me that story most of the a lot I won't say most a lot of the singers today can't. No, they don't. And, and I, I understand what you're saying. When you're singing, you're singing the story. And you have, to, you have to project it and, and connect with the audience what the story's about in the song and with the words and put it together. So it's really coming from you as you're part of that story. If you're just doing the monotone singing, just going through the motions, it, there's nothing behind it. What, and people paid to come and <coughs> see you. You don't even look at them. You won't even look. That's me and Kenny James. Mm -hmm. He, uh, at Cafe Cordial in um, um, Sherman, Oaks. Sherman Oaks, California. Yeah. And, you know, Kenny won Star Search the same night. He was the male vocalist winner the same night as I did. And we've been friends since then. He's a fabulous diva. But, you know, the kids nowadays, they, they, uh, people, they sing to you, and they'll, you'll be right there, and they will never look at you and acknowledge. Are you kidding me? People pay to come and see you. Make them a part of your show. Exactly. Connect. Connect. Yeah, connect with the audience. Um, you get a lot of people today that, you have to have for you to to coach somebody you have to want to work with somebody who know you have potential you have yeah. to have. so what you have a lot of people that come to you that you turn down i do i do yeah. because it's just of no consequence you need to go and be a plumber yeah exactly or uh something yeah whatever don't sing how do they respond when you tell them that <laughs> some of them with sh much shock <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'll tell you why I'm saying that, because that leads me into American Idol, and, oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know how the auditions were, and you know that the show is, was a great show, yeah. and a lot of the show is built on, on the people who really aren't that good, because their response is to 
Simon or anybody, well, what do you know? You don't know what you're talking about. How right. do they use, how do you tell somebody like that or someone like you, you don't know what you're talking about because they think they're good? You know what I'm saying? Um, nobody ever told me that. I don't think they had the guts at that point. But they, they have um, said that to other people. Uh, ooh, probably. And this was crazy. That little girl, Thea Magia, mm -hmm. she's awesome. The little Filipino girl. Mm -hmm is amazing she's an amazing singer and i had been working with them forever to say this is your part sing this and the child was reading the lyrics and it's like you're on stage in an hour why are you reading mm -hmm. why don't you know you don't listen you don't pay attention and so for this reason you are not going to make it and you need to and she came back the next year this one came back a couple of years after that and still got nothing mm. so you know, you need to know, you need to know something and be willing. If you don't know, you need to be at least willing to learn. Of course, of course. You know. well, they looked like they were being called on the carpet, like, oh, okay, I screwed up. Because, yeah. listen to me, American Idol is a huge national, international show. Absolutely. If you're going to come and you want to be an American, and the operative word here is idol. Exactly. There is the op operative word. So in order to be that, you better put in some work. Or don't come to me. Yeah, yeah. This is all part, right? What's this part, right? This here? is the second, my second season on the show. These, these were all different. And this child was like, she's crying and she wasn't paying attention and she couldn't connect. And I'm like, we, you knew that this moment was coming. What you come here for? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Can, pray that they don't send you to me. What happens at that point? They walk away? No, they have to go on stage. And then they get low scores, and then they go home. That's too bad. It's too bad, because she actually is a good singer. She was having a really, really, really rough day. She would lost her voice because she'd been up pretty much all night trying to learn the song. But she's a really good singer, and we still talk on Facebook. She, she and I became Facebook friends. So did you and I? Thea, Thea and I still talk. You're my friend now, too. Well, thank you so much. You're my kid from uh, last season um, is, uh, and I also, Jacob Lusk, we just did a play together not too long ago. Um, and uh, Phil Phillips was my baby, and he actually won. Well, when you coach uh, for, for vo vocal as well, and you're doing it for stage, say they're going to do a play, you give them all the stuff that, that goes along with the singing as performance and movement and connecting and all, everything that goes with it it's not just singing if it's a play yeah. then you have choreographers okay and you have directors who okay. do that I give you the the singing move and so the director yes. will say this like in okay this is Sisterella I'm not in it right there but I played the role of Dahlia um, who was the wicked stepmother and Dahlia was evil. <laughs> she was an evil cookie. But the director gave me the dance steps. The, the choreographer, I'm sorry, right. gave me the dance and, 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 and then the director, who was Kenny Ortega, said, here's where you're going to be here. Here's where you're going to be here. This is the atmosphere. Kay. So I do that in song. OK. OK. You know. I get it. Yeah. How, how long were you with American Idol? Two seasons. Mm -hmm. Two seasons. Are they coming back now again? Yeah, but I don't know as what. It's changed again? It's changed again. N and everybody's gone now, uh, I hear, except for, I think, Michael Orland, who was directly responsible for getting me to be seen for it. He gave them my name, along with, like, 30 other names. Um, I think he's still there. Well, it's, it's like we talked about with groups. When they change their crew, Mm -hmm. and they move on, it's not even the same show anymore. No, because Nigel is not there and Ken is not there. Yeah. And, you know, it's Deborah Bird is not there. It's a different thing altogether. It's a whole different thing. So, I would like to be there. I don't know, maybe they'll... Uh, I did get asked last season to come back, but then something else happened, and then I was busy. By the time they got back to me, it was like, sorry. Uh, what have you done, what have you been doing since? I've been doing... Wild Women Blues with Linda Hopkins. That was right before Star Search. I mean, uh, before American Idol. But I've also been doing Three Ladies of Blues a lot in Europe, um, working on a different 
album and coaching and just working. You're all over the place. Just, I'm working. I know. I right. got to make a living. Oh, absolutely. Um, tell me about the inauguration for President uh, Clinton when he asked you to sing. This is really an Linda honor. Hopkins, my baby. Linda's going to be on our show in January. Yes, that's <coughs> my. You know, she just had a birthday. Um, she's 89 years old, and the birthday party was last weekend, and I couldn't go because I also sing with a Russian jazz band, and we were last weekend at the same day of her party at Catalina Bar, um, Catalina is a jazz club mm -hmm. here in Los Angeles, and so that was the same night, and I was unable to do that, but I'm going to go by the house and give her some hugs and kisses. We've been doing Wild Women Blues together uh, in Europe, and it's... Uh, it's awesome. How did that come about? Oh, she, who called me for that? I think, I can't even remember how I got the phone call. Yeah. I got a call, phone call from somebody and who said, Linda Hopkins wants to see you. And I said, me? I knew her from New York. Sure. Because, you know, we played the same clubs sure. in New York. My husband used to play guitar for her. And uh, so when I got there, uh, a lot of people were sitting there auditioning a lot of other singers, and Roz Ryan, one of them said, Roz Ryan, who's in Dubai now, where I want to go back to, said, oh, my God, you're here. I may as well leave. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's amazing how everything is so connected with your husband and the group and singing here and this person that you, over the years you built all these connections and people who know you, and you're never going to be without something to do. No. There's always going to be something. Roz and I go all the way back to New York, too. He used to play for her, too. He's played for everybody. Yeah. Um, even Frank Sinatra, uh, Jr. He used to play for Frank Jr. Lainey Kazan. His credits go, but it's not about you today, dog. It's about me. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about President Clinton. That was because I was working with this other group, and we had done a fundraiser for him called the Bob Gale Trio or something like that it was called. And he was there this night that we were doing this <coughs> fundraiser for him and I was singing and this man turned around and pointed and said I want her at the inauguration and I was looking around like who in the world is he talking and when I turned to look like this he went no I'm talking to you <laughs> not with me and he said yes and there I was and I actually got asked back the second term but I was in Europe and couldn't come. What an honor. I was doing a play in Europe, and I didn't have an understudy, so I couldn't come. What an honor. What was that like? It was, it was the most amazing experience. I have pictures that are just, it's like tasting something sweet. You know, he and his wife were so fabulous, and he got on stage with us and played. I took my mother, and she was like, I've seen it all. I've never seen. I never thought I'd see you standing next to a president, a president of the United States, States singing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That was her, to her, in her mind, my mother, in her mind, I had finally made it. I'm like, Mommy, I got records. She didn't care. Didn't matter. <laughs> Did not no. matter. That's what she centered in on, and that's what was all that about. That was my baby with the president of the United yeah. States, and he is asking for her personally. That was like heaven for her. Yeah, but that, you know, out of all the things you've done, they're all been magnificent things. There's no question about it. But when a president of the United States oh, asks you yeah. to come somewhere, it's a big deal. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I mean, it, can't, it doesn't get any bigger than that, you know? <laughs> no. <coughs> I, was, I had a good time. I had a good time. Well, people center in on that. And, you know, I mean, how many people get asked by the president to do anything? No. So that's you I get into D.C. with security guards. Uh, when I went to get my mother, I got into the limo, and the security guards were there, and I was like, what are you doing? And they said, you, because of where you are and what you're doing, we have to. So the guard got in the, in the limo, took me to pick up my mother, brought me back to the hotel, brought my mate, took us back to the room. I was like, all right. Oh, boy. <laughs> that's first class, first class treatment. Um, how would you suggest to somebody today, because there's a lot of people watching out here yeah. that want to follow a singing career, they want to be in, in performers, they want to go out and do stuff. What kind of advice would you give them? Work hard, be diligent, learn your craft, stay honest, do all you can to be forthright, upright, and tight. And if you're jealous, get rid of it, yeah. because it'll get you nowhere. That's your downfall right there. It, it, it's a, that's, a, that's like a poison. It is an absolute poison. Yeah. 
you know, and, it, and it'll get you nothing. You said something when we first started talking about there's only one of you and that's you and there's only one of me and that's me. And somebody had asked me once, who do you ever want to be when you grow up? Who are your heroes? Actually, my girlfriend asked me that and I said, nobody. I just want to be the best me I could be. Yeah. And, and people don't realize that because I do have friends who want to be somebody else and oh, if I can only be like that person or that person. When you're only one of a kind on this world, you've got to really embrace that and be that one of a kind. That's right. And be the best you can possibly be. That's right. Don't settle for less. Let me tell you something. There are millions of singers. Nobody <coughs> sounds like me. Nobody. Right. Yeah. My grandmother used the term. She said, and my uncle used to say when I would sing in, at his church, he would say, <coughs> there was something in your voice that it's like three people singing at once because it splits. My grandfather used to say it. And he would say, there's a sound that's unlike anybody else. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a great, great thing. You know, it's just identifiable to me. I understand. It's like a trademark. Absolutely. Do you actually realize it when you hear it or you, just, you hear it from other people? Do you recognize that? No. You usually don't when you hear that. No, I don't. I know I don't sound <coughs> like anybody else, but I learned how to blend because my sound is different. In the background, if you put me in a three-part background, if you are, if your ear is really tuned, mm -hmm. you can hear me and you know it's me. Mm -hmm. But if I want to because my voice teacher, Kamal Scott, back home, and my mother, my mother didn't focus too much on showing me how to blend because I was the one doing the lead most right, of the time. Right. But when I got to Kamal and I got to do the whiz and all of that other stuff, y you're in a group and you need to be able to, there should be a cohesiveness when you're singing. Right. And that, he taught me how to breathe from here, suck from here, blow from here, do this, 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 and it will all gel together and Love sound it, like It one. is in the breathing too, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. Okay, now, where can we find you on the Internet? I know you have a Facebook because I clicked and added you as a friend. <laughs> and, <coughs> and you yeah. said, okay, and there it is. That would be me. And th th That's th me and Nick and Val. Th there, this is uh, your website? Yes, PeggyBlue.com. That's my Twitter. That's your Twitter. So you're computer literate. And this is my hands around the table. This is a, may we talk about this? Yes, let's do. I like that. Hands Around the Table is an actual movement, and I got this notice from Alan Waldman, and you won't know who he is so much, but Alan Waldman decided after my last season on American Idol that Hands Around the Table should be born. It's a nonprofit at this moment. It's so hopefully we will it'll become a television show um, and we will hear stories and help people raise money to help people educate kids in whatever capacity they need it give them give people food give people homes give people shelter and do all we can it's a give back because you have to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you've been as, as, and I won't use the term lucky, I'm going to use the term blessed, because that's what I am. I am a blessed woman. I'm a thousand fifteen years old, and all of my thousand fifteen years, I have been blessed. So it's my duty and my job to give back and pay it forward, like other people did for me. I'm a total believer in that. Got to do it. Absolutely. Get right back. Got to do it. So that's what Hands Around the Table. Please go to www.handsaroundthetable.net. View the, the, the video. There's a video there. Click like for us and help me pay it forward. There I am coaching somebody who was singing some crazy stuff. I'm definitely <laughs> going to do it. I think that's wonderful. Please. Well, that's I, my website. That's Rick Drayson, one the only. And that's my Rick's Corner, which is my other talk show. I'm over 9 yes. million viewers now. And uh, that's my Twitter, I believe. Awesome. Yes, that's my Twitter. Awesome. And that's my Facebook with my girlfriend, Ina. And may I say she's gorgeous, and you are too. Well, thank you so much. But I'm blessed to be sitting here with you. You're an I'm amazing woman. Thank you so much. I've had a wonderful time. And so here. have I.
Oh, boy, if I could only read that top line. <laughs> <laughs> it's all bent, but I want to thank all our viewers and chatters for joining us this here on Actors E Chat. We're here Monday through Friday at Hollywood California Actors E Chat, which surpassed 5 million viewers, and we do appreciate you. If you want to see all today's show, go to actorsentertainment.com and put your talent's name, Peggy Blue, in the search box, and it'll come right up. Also visit Actors Entertainment IMDB.com, that's the movie, internet movie database, to see some of the thousand plus entertainment industry guests on Actors E. Please follow us on Actors Entertainment on Twitter at Actors Entertain. And join us on Facebook at Actors Entertainment fan page, and don't forget to like us. Please stay tuned for Actors Reporter Animation, which won Best Animation at the Telly Awards, and a great job for Pepper J Productions, and now Media, and this is the award right here. And I want to thank you, Peggy, for being here. I, have I feel an very honored to be able to sit next to you and thank listen you. to your whole history, which has been absolutely amazing. Well, I forgot to tell you that I won this year the <coughs> Malibu Music <coughs> Award, actually, Vocal I saw, Coach of the Year. I actually, I saw that too. <laughs> another, another feather. And thank all of you for watching, and stay tuned for more Actors E. Goodbye. What's that? <laughs> Actors E Chat Show? Happens to be my favorite in the morning. I want nothing but a cup of coffee. A bottle of Kahlua, six naked girl, wait, no, that's not right. Actor Z Chat Show. Oh my gosh, hey big Hollywood starlet that just happens to be walking by. Yes? I'm not from around here, but I want to be an actress just like you. What do I need to know? <gasps> Kid. Let me tell you, whether you're a seasoned pro or a naive newbie like you, there's one thing you need to know. To get my first job, I lived in a slum, beat out 50 other girls to play a drunk bum. I cried. My first agent charged me 30%, Thanks. working three jobs and I couldn't pay rent, but I'm an actor. She's an actor. A shark nod my leg on a B film in Sydney to pay for the stitches. I sold my left kidney. I finally made a union. Their rules were complex. Their piles of paperwork fogged up my specs. But I'm an actor. She's an actor. I'm an actor. Well, that's rather disturbing. But what's the one thing I need to know? Don't listen to the critics. Don't follow all the tabs. Forget that sleazy photog and the agent that's got cramps. Go to Actors Reporter. Actors Reporter. Actors Learn the tricks and the secrets without all the sweat. An info packed one stop shop. It's free and on. How can they help her? Career cues, union news, makeup woes, advice from pros, insurance tips, choosing scripts, everything at your fingertips. Actors reporter. Actors reporter. Actors reporter. Dad. I just got a call back. chat show. I'm just one of your Actors E hosts, but as you can see, I'm also the Actors E Live video editor, which means that I'm here even when you don't see me. Actors E is here to chat with you Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Hollywood Time as I like to call it. Our guests include actors, directors, producers, writers, singers, comics, and others that are all in the entertainment industry. You can see previous shows at www.actorsentertainment.com and be sure to check out our guest index to find your favorite celebrities. See you next time. I'm working.